Well, it's good, but I think it could use a few more guns. Hello and welcome back to Warspetters Tactics, the strategy-focused 40k channel, where today we're talking about the Repulsor and Repulsor Executioner, a powerhouse model in 8th edition, though in 9th it is far more questionable. In the video we'll go over the datasheets, talk about some loadouts that I'd think about running for them, how to get more out of them in-game, and whether or not they're worth it in 9th. So let's take a look at these repulsive anti-grav battle tanks with a look over their datasheets. So let's start with a standard repulsor. It was Belisarius Corps' first attempt at tacking grav plates onto vehicles, and I think it's kind of supposed to function in a similar sort of way to the Land Raider, being an enormous floating castle of death with plenty of guns on it that can transport a decent squad of Primaris Marines. At the moment, the standard repulsor will cost you 315 points for the model. This one buys you a decent enough stat line, toughness 8, 16 wounds, a reasonable 10-inch movement, and a 3-plus armor save with no imbul. Just for the model, this is quite a lot to get through, but to be honest, for 315 points, it isn't really all that tough. If your opponent's packing the right firepower, it'll only take around 8 or 9 last cannon hits to down it, which interestingly enough is roughly equivalent to how many it takes to gun down a Redemptor Dreadnought, although of course the Redemptor Dreadnought is far, far cheaper. I guess Toughness 8 is a bit of a boost against things like Melters and auto cannons, though. Of course, it's absolutely bristling in guns, which we'll get onto in a second, but in terms of other special rules, it's got really quite a big explosion. If it rolls that 6, then everyone within 6 inches is taking the big D6 mortal wounds, so if there is any chance of it being destroyed in the next turn, ideally you don't want your entire army crawling all over it. It's got the biggest Primaris transport capacity in the Space Marine Codex, transporting 10 Primaris Marines or 6 Gravis Armor Marines, so you could potentially hide a full squad of Hellblasters or 6 Aggressors or Eradicators inside it. I think it does kind of struggle with this though. On the one hand, it's quite fragile for the points, so it doesn't really want to be running right up to the enemy, yet the big transport capacity might encourage it to do otherwise. Finally, it does also have a few useful keywords. It is of course a transport vehicle, but it also has the Machine Spirit keyword, the Repulsor Field keyword, and also Smokescreen if you take Auto Launchers, all of which allow it access to a fair few stratagems, which we'll get onto later. Perhaps the most impressive thing is the sheer amount of firepower that's bristling all over this thing. I know I put up the joke picture earlier, but it really isn't all that far from the truth. It's quite nice to be able to have quite a lot of guns to take down different targets at different ranges, but I have often seen when people try and shoot with a repulsor, it can lead to a bit of decision paralysis, not knowing which way to go with it, and sometimes struggling to remember exactly which guns you declared where by the time you've actually got round to firing them. In any case, out of the list, it's got three essential base choices, two Kratstorm grenade launchers, one Hunter Slayer missile, it's quite a fun one that, to be honest. It is basically a hunter-killer missile, but it can target things out of line of sight. And you also have the option to take an additional Iron Hail Heavy Stubber, which doesn't seem to have a points cost at the moment, so you basically always may as well do this. Then you get on to an entire series of choices. You can take a Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon, or a Last Talon for plus 5 points. For me, I'd be more tempted by the Gatling Cannon out of those two. It's really quite general purpose and a bit longer range than the Last Talon. Then you have Twin Heavy Bolters, or a Twin Last Cannon, and out of those, I feel that the last cannon is a bit more efficient, though maybe if you're Imperial Fists or something, Twin Heavy Bolters might be the way to go. Then for the Pintor Mounted Weapon, you've got an Iron Hail Heavy Stubber, or an Onslaught Gatling Cannon. For these, I'm not really sure that the extra 4 shots are worth it from the Onslaught Gatling Cannon. 15 points is quite a big ask over the otherwise free Iron Hail. Then you've got either 2 Storm Bolters or 2 Frag Storm Launchers. Personally, I slightly prefer the Storm Bolters there. You can either choose Auto Launchers for the Smokescreen keyword, or two more Fragstorm launchers. I could go either way on that, the option of Smokescreen is quite powerful, but more firepower isn't to be sniffed at either. And finally, one more Icarus Iron Hail Heavy Stubber or Icarus Rocket Pod, which you could also swap out for a Fragstorm Grenade Launcher or Storm Bolter, though honestly I'd pick up one of the Icarus options, as they're far better and are also free. Out of those two, I'd say that the Icarus Rocket Pod gives you more value, it's a multi-damage weapon and a strength 7, though the Iron Hail is by no means bad either. So lots of quite complex options there, putting them all together into one repulsor tank for 325 points. This one's got the options that I mentioned I quite liked, two Crapstone Grenade Launchers, the Hunter Slayer Missile, Iron Hail Stubber, Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon, Twin Last Cannons, Iron Hail Stubber, two Storm Bolters, two Frag Storm Launchers, and finally an Icarus Rocket Pod. It is pretty silly just having a tank that takes quite so long to say the names of all the guns. If you happen to be hovering at 18 inches away from your opponent, that adds up to around 34 anti-infantry shots, two last cannons, and two autocannon equivalent shots from that Icarus pot. 
I think for that reason alone, reporters can be fairly intimidating to face on the table, even though they cost quite a lot of points for what they do. One way or the other, you're still going to be taking a ton of fairly random shots, and they will likely do some decent damage to any infantry units that get too close. If we move on now to the Repulsor Executioner, this thing comes in at a fair bit pricier, at 355 points base, though it does get a fair bit more war gear just included. The unit profile is largely the same as the standard one, you're swapping out transport capacity for a big gun, so you've only got 6 shots total there, and also that big gun happens to have a quill on optics, which allow it to hit on 2s rather than 3s. This one is locked into several of the standard Repulsor options, it takes the Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon, 2 Frag Storms, 2 Storm Bolters, a twin heavy bolter, a twin Icarus heavy stubber, auto launches as default for smokescreen, and then you get the very big gun, whether you want to take the heavy laser destroyer or the macro plasma incinerator. The laser destroyer costs an extra 10 points, and we'll compare them in just a second. Finally, you have a couple of optional extra add-ons, you can take another iron hail stubber for an extra 5 points, and an Icarus rocket pod for an extra 5 as well. Neither of them are going to change the world, but for 10 points that's some very decent firepower that you're buying, so I would include both of those. So when comparing the big guns, the Macro Plasma Incinerator is Heavy D6, Strength 8, AP-4 and Damage 2, and you can overcharge it to Strength 9 and Damage 3. The Heavy Laser Destroyer, you now only get the 2 shots, at Strength 12, AP-4, Damage D3 plus 3. It's worth noting that the Repulse Executioner used to be able to fire these twice, I'm afraid that's no longer the case, the only buff it gets to its firepower is it's hitting on 2s. Overall, provided you're happy to overcharge, then the damage maths out to be just a bit better for the macro plasma incinerator against all targets. You're averaging around 6 wounds to tanks, or 2 or 3 dead space marines depending on how you roll, where the heavy laser destroyer will average 5 or 6 wounds to tanks, and around 1 or 2 dead space marines. Of course, if you're overcharging, you'll lose a wound or 2 here or there on the executioner. You also do have slightly worse range on the plasma than the heavy laser destroyer, though you do save 10 points in the price. For me, I think that the macro plasma is probably the stronger pick of the two at the moment, though if you do just want some dedicated anti-tank, the laser destroyer will do fine, and extra range and no overheats is a bonus. If we put that all together on the Repulse Executioner, for 365 points you get yourself a macro plasma, the two additional upgrades, the pod and the stubber, and that totals a pretty whopping 41 anti-infantry shots, an average of 3.5 macro plasma incinerator shots, and the two autocannon style shots from the Icarus pod. It's kind of surprising just how close this is to the other one in many ways. For the additional 40 points investment, you've gained around 7 anti-infantry shots, and around 1.5 anti-tank shots. I would say between the two of them, they're fairly well balanced at the moment. So if we are investing in one of these very big toys for the Space Marines, how can we get a bit more out of it on the table? Naturally, some chapters have far more affinity with vehicles and big ones like the Repulsors, and if you are wanting to field them, it's quite possible that Iron Hands might be one way to go. Their Super Doctrine can allow them to reroll ones in the first turn, not bad for the Plasma, they'll degrade slower so be far more accurate when bracketed, get a 6 plus feel no pain which helps out with the durability, can use the Iron Stone to make one much harder to kill, again shoring up durability its main weakness, and plenty of other support within the Codex, such as psychic powers to repair the tank or make it even tougher, with a truly massive vehicle Iron Hands are hard to beat. Other fairly interesting options though could be Ultramarines, Allowing it to fall back and shoot is quite good when you've got quite so many guns that you don't want locked up. Imperial Fist can grant Ignore's cover and help out with heavy bolter shots if you have them. Salamanders could have a few powerful rerolls on its heaviest weapons, and also could use psychic powers to make it harder to hit. Raven Guard could give you a 2 plus cover save for being in light cover at good distances, and Death Watch could help out with some rerolls. I'm sure there's more. If you can think of anything within your codex, feel free to let me know down in the comments. For character support, the Tech Marine is the obvious choice. When you're buffing this much tank, paying the extra points to have him make the tank go from Ballistic Skill 3 to Ballistic Skill 2 is going to get you quite a bit more firepower, and of course he can help put the vehicle back together when it gets shot up. If you do have one handy, potentially a Librarian with Psychic Fortress could be a good shout, to give the tank a 5 plus invul save as well, and again help out with the durability issue. Of course, because you have to cast it, it won't help if you're going second and your opponent Alpha strikes it though. I don't think a Tech Marine is mandatory with one of these, but I think it certainly opens it up to the point where it is worth considering. Finally, we have a Cluster of Stratagems, Armour of Contempt for some Feel No Pain against Mortal Wounds, should that be a problem. Power of the Machine Spirit for 2 CP, could maybe be worth it to fight on top bracket if you are down at the lowest one. Grav Pulse for 1 Command Point, that's the Repulsor Field Stratagem, it can allow it to fall back and shoot if you don't happen to be Ultramarines. 
or perhaps more powerfully, if you declare it in the enemy's charge phase, then they get minus two to their charges. Particularly nice if your opponent does try to do something cheeky and charge you out of deep strike. Finally, if you are a repulsor executioner or you have the repulsor with auto launchers, you can use smokescreen. 1 CP for a minus 1 to hit really is quite good if you're thinking you're going to be taking some hefty firepower. On such a massive vehicle, I'd have a low threshold for using this if it was focused down. So overall, how good is the repulsor? Generally, I think if you're using one of these in-game, you really need to treat it like a bit of a glass hammer, try and get it firing every turn, but not let your opponent bring force to bear on it, as it will crumble pretty quickly to any sort of sustained anti-tank fire. I want to screen this as much as possible, so you don't have to spend CP having to fall back and shoot, and so scary melee units can't just rip it to bits in the fight phase, and maybe use some line of sight blocking terrain or its good movement to either outrange or hide from enemy long-range anti-tank guns on turn 1. I did mention the transport capacity issues before, but I think it is kind of questionable value to use as an actual transport. You don't want to be putting 300 points of fairly glass hammer tank on the front line, so it is kind of at odds with zooming Primaris forces into the centre of the battlefield. I'd be a bit more tempted to kind of opportunistically hide a fragile Primaris unit or two inside it. Maybe if it is just sat at the backfield getting ready to unleash its firepower, putting in a squad of something like Hellblasters, which are so squishy that the enemy would actually want to shoot them, might be a good bet if you have them on the field. Could also work with a few of the slightly more expensive Gravis troops, things like Aggressors or Eradicators perhaps. Even then though, I think you're already getting to the point where the tank is kind of about as durable as the unit is, so I guess it could make things harder for your opponent if they have to put the Strength 5 and 6 weapons into the tank rather than into the unit. Typically though, I think I'd want to get them out fairly early in the game, quite possibly straight on turn 1 after enduring the first enemy round of firepower. So overall, in terms of how strong the Repulsor is, I think it does struggle to compete with other options. Just compared to perhaps the gold standard Space Marine vehicle right now, the Redemptor Dreadnought, the numbers just really don't stack up in the Repulsor's favour. You can get almost two Redemptor Dreadnoughts for the price of one Repulsor. As we said for durability, they're pretty much equally tough against Strength 9 anti-tank weapons. They put out far more heavy anti-tank fire with those macro plasma incinerators, almost as many anti-infantry shots with 28 or 24 inch range and on top of that can get rerolls through core and also fight in close combat. It is a bit weird to have a mainline battle tank directly outcompeted by a dreadnought, but here we are. I think the repulsor is a fair bit more balanced against other space marine vehicles if you are comparing against them, though generally non-dreadnought armour options aren't really tending to be the strongest in codex space marines right now. Overall, I'd say that repulsors and repulsor executioners aren't a particularly competitive unit for codex space marines, but I still feel that they could be the sort of unit that's quite punishing and intimidating when you're playing against newer players. Against perhaps a more friendly list that doesn't have tons of long-ranged anti-tank firepower, they could be a genuine menace, and there's certainly something pretty imposing about having a tank or three absolutely bristling with loads of anti-tank firepower, hovering at decent arm's length, so you might struggle to deal with them in any real fashion. If your opponent does have units to answer them though, they can go down trivially easily though against the wrong matchup. So let me know what you think about repulsors and repulsor executioners down in the comments below. Is my assessment of them right, or am I being a bit too harsh on them? Look forward to hearing your thoughts and ideas down in the comments. If you've enjoyed the video and would like to see more Space Marine Tactics videos, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, or I'll certainly be keeping them coming very regularly. Finally, if you'd like to help support the channel, I would just like to mention my Element Games affiliate link down in the video description. It's a discount based retailer in the UK, and if you were thinking about picking up any repulsors or anything else in the near future, if you click on the link and buy something from Element, a small amount of money goes to help support All Specs Tactics without costing you any more at all when you buy. It can just be a way to help keep these videos coming if you were thinking about buying some Warhammer anyway. I do also have an Amazon link in the USA and Canada. That one works basically the exact same way, so if you're over there, click the link, buy literally anything across Amazon whatsoever that you are going to anyway, and a bit goes to help support the channel. A massive thank you to you guys who have been using that, it does make a big difference, and a big thank you to everyone else who's watching the video anyway. I hope to see you guys next time.